Welcome back to our intermediate financial accounting class. Over our last few segments, we've been talking about deferred taxes, and we've done lots of neat stuff. We've talked about why taxes are important, how they affect the financial statements, what deferred taxes are, how we calculate them, the steps involved, and we finally started doing some really fun examples last time, walking all the way through a calculation of deferred taxes and getting to that fun journal entry, even when our tax rates have changed. Now we're going to continue on with that example. We did year one last time. Now we're going to do years two and three so that we can see how this all rolls together to totally account for the differences between gap and tax. So to start us out, I've already created a template for year two. It looks a lot like what we just did in year one, except of course I've removed some of the numbers so that the template is open and ready to go. Notice what I didn't delete was the step five calculation. We'll talk about that in a minute, how easy it is to do step five in future years once you've got this table initially built. But, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to step number one. In step one, we calculate our income before taxes. For this year, my revenues are 4050000 and my expenses are 2250000 This comes right from your PowerPoint slide for year two. That gives us income before taxes of 1.8 million. I still don't have any permanent differences, so book taxable income and income before taxes are the same. I get down to step three, and I still need to calculate my difference in revenues. And again, I'm not gonna try to do that with an equation. I'm gonna draw it, because that's the best way to do it. So let me jump back to my PowerPoint slide where I can draw this for us. And I've got year one in here. Now let's do year two. We're going to start with our gap number and our gap revenue for this year is 4050000 For tax purposes, I'm recording $3 million. Cash coming in, that's below the $4 million, so it's down here. And my difference as I move from gap to tax is $1,050,000, but this time it's negative because I'm going from $4 million down to the three million, and that's the adjustment that I need to see in my Excel spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and put that in. That gives me taxable income that's much lower than my book taxable income. And let's see, my enacted tax rate for this year, it's a great year to have that big drop between gap and tax because I'm not paying on nearly as much as I would have if I'd been paying taxes on all of that revenue now. And that gets me to step four. So step four gives me taxes payable of 262500 For step five, I've already done a lot of the work. I've set up my table for all of the future years from when this deferred tax issue started. So the only change I need to make is deferred taxes are based solely on future years, not current or past years. Well, the only future year left is year three. So if I just delete year two, then step five is done, at least when there's only one adjustment. Please keep in mind that a lot of companies have adjustments coming in and out and reconciling over time. So sometimes this gets a little more complex, but well, I won't say complex. It gets a little more fun. It's exciting to figure this out and do it. But in this case, with just one difference that's reconciling quickly, then this is all I need to do. And my new balance or desired balance in my T account is 165000 it's a negative, so it's a credit. Well, that makes sense now. Last year, I paid on $300,000 that I didn't think I should have to. This year, I didn't pay on over a million that I thought I should have to pay on. So between those two years, 300000 too high, a million too low, nets out to 750000 that I have not paid taxes on yet. Since I haven't paid the taxes yet, I'm going to have to pay extra taxes in year three to reconcile things out. So that's why it comes out as a liability. Now that I've got this step five number, I can move on to step six. And to get step six to work out right, I need to fix this T account. So I'm going to start by copying and pasting. And first off, I'm going to change this number to the balance from last year, which was 202500. And that was our number last year. Now, I'm going to get rid of this fill because this is not the adjustment for this year. I, I need a new adjustment for this year. 
I want to end with a balance of 165. Now notice, I'm going to make this a positive 165. You can do that a couple of ways. I put in a negative sign. You can also use the absolute value function either way. But please remember, there is never, ever, 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 ever a negative in a T account. We just switch from debit to credit. So there's my desired ending balance. And while I'm at it, I'm going to make this a permanent reference so that when I copy and paste this template over later, I don't have my equations mess up like they just did. So let's see. Oh, that's not the right format. Let me change that so it looks good. I want this to be a currency with no decimal places. There we go. That looks better. Now, if I want to go from 200 and 2,500 to a credit of 165, then I don't need a debit amount. What I need is the sum of these two numbers. And there's my adjustment for the current year so that I end up with the deferred tax liability that I know I need. And now that I've got that number, I'm ready to do my journal entry. So I'm going to delete the journal entry that was here. I know my income tax payable should be 262.5. This time I need a credit to deferred taxes. And again, my income tax expense will be the sum of these two. Notice income tax expense is much higher than the payable because under GAAP, I thought my taxable income should be 1.8. Under tax, it's only 750000 So that's why it's lower. And that's year two. Now, hopefully you're getting in the groove and this is feeling more comfortable. We can move a little bit faster. I'm going to move right into year three. So if you've got questions or issues, please stop and relook at this before you move on. But I'm going to copy this whole section. I'm going to leave myself a blank line. I'm going to use one of the special paste options to copy in column widths and values. I'm going to delete all the stuff that's specific to year two so that I'm ready to put in the year three numbers. Now, the year three numbers, revenue is 2250000 Expenses for the year, 1250000 Again, all of these numbers are coming from our PowerPoint slide. Again, I don't have any permanent differences, so that's a zero. Now I need my difference in revenues. Just like we've done for the other two years, we're going to do it with a picture. So let's go back to PowerPoint so we can draw this. Year three. Gap is 2250000 Tax is still the $3 million, just as it has been each of the other years. So to get from gap to tax, this time I'm going up. $750,000, and that's the adjustment that I'm going to put into my spreadsheet. So right here, difference in revenues, $50,000. I have to pay extra this year. I knew that was coming because I had that huge tax break in the past, so now I'm kind of on the hook. I've got to pay that amount. An active tax rate this year is 22%, so at least, even though I'm paying more now, at least I'm paying at 22%, not 35%. That's a good thing. And that gives us our step number four, taxes payable, 385000 Step number five, again, I'm only looking at future years. So I'm going to delete this year. And you'll notice there's no value here anymore. Well, there shouldn't be a value there anymore. I've recognized over these three years, $9 million of tax revenue and $9 million of gap revenue. So there is nothing left to cause a deferred tax. The differences have reconciled. So I have nothing left to reconcile, and I want to end with a zero balance in my deferred tax account. So I'm going to set that up by formatting my T account a little bit so it will look good. And I'm going to get rid of this highlighted number from last year. You'll notice since I use the permanent reference, I don't have to worry about these numbers getting all wonky. That's a technical term for messing up. I want to end with a zero balance. So if I'm at 165, I want to end at zero. Then I need a debit of 165 so that they cancel out. And now that I've got that number, I can do my journal entry. So you'll notice there's a 385. That's the taxes payable. That's already there. Deferred tax has to be a debit this time. My expense, again, is my plug figure. So there's my expense for the year. $220,000. And just like that, I've reconciled. Gap and tax have both recognized the same amount of revenue. The deferred tax issue is gone, and I'm done. 
I'm just waiting for the next issue to pop up so that I'm ready to account for that one. And with that, we're going to wrap up this segment. When we come back, we'll start talking about what happens when we actually have a negative value for our income taxes payable. So instead of us owing the government, they owe us because we've had a loss. And there's some fun accounting that goes along with that. We'll talk about that next time. I'll see you then. Thanks.